So hello everybody, this is my latest test for the Oculus Quest and as you can see here this is a super simple scene file and um, I was running a test on the sculpture here with a rotation on it so this is movable and um, when I was running the test on the Quest I lost about like 20 frames per second that was the drop on it. Um, you will also notice that I have a scanned character in here and that mesh density is pretty high. I'm aware of it that I want to keep the triangles and the polygon count as low as possible but as a test I was kind of curious if this guy is actually having any impact and so far the test showed that I had zero impact actually even by removing them on this uh, test scene file. There you find also here's the uh, wireframe mode like a chair. I downloaded from Sketchfab that's the matrix chair. Uh, anyways, and as you can see, primitive objects, a cube and a cube and a few planes and I just added some texture maps to it. Also, as you can see and in the forum, you don't need any plugins when, for example, in the plugin settings, Substance is popping up. Just uncheck it. You know, you don't need it at all. Substance, I use it for many other projects, but it's basically... Uh, where you can use PBR shaders and download them and just uh, assign them to objects, but you don't need this at all. Uh, it's all clean. As you can see, I use just super simplified materials, standard Unreal materials, and there is only a texture map with 500 by 512 by 512 loaded into the base color. Uh, so very simplified. Also, I think that the only material I created with some glossy reflections, so roughness is set to zero, is basically this red uh, plastic material I created, high reflective, and that's it. Uh, those materials, I call it clay. There's nothing on it besides a white color, and then you can also see here, uh, spec is set to one, and the roughness is set to one, that's it. But there is nothing crazy going on. What I noticed was for the entializing issues, when you look at my other tests, that this appears when it looks like object geometry is intersecting with each other. So what I did for this test, as you can clearly see, there is always a gap in between those primitive objects. And when the gap is, so basically geometry is not intersecting or it's not coplanar or uh, coplanar with each other, you don't run into those crazy antalyzing issues. I also wanted to call this out and say like when you go to your antalyzing settings, then in the uh, Oculus documentation also for Unreal, I was basically reading that you should use multi-sample antalyzing set uh, as a standard for the target uh, uh, device platform Android for the Quest is 4 um, uh, for the multi-sample analyzing but also in this case I was running both de tests 8 uh, or 4 and I didn't see any any big difference at all well let's keep it this way I have in both options it really doesn't matter the same issues um, also forward shading you know, uh, forward shading on or off didn't give me any any uh, changes at all. Also, looking at the stats, I didn't see any better performance or you know worse performance. So this was uh, kind of like very very interesting. It is recommended that you are having forward shading on for final. I think for the final baking process when you deploy it, I would say yes, do it. But also when you have forward shading on, you don't see anything in the Unreal Editor uh, if you're working in the look development while you are also using Shader Model 5. And as you can see here, this is for me important. When I have Shader Model 5, I actually want to see what my lights are doing and what they're not doing. Also in the world settings, as you can see, uh, at the beginning I force no pre-computed lighting and I do this so that I don't need to build any lights and I don't need to bake anything. But maybe another another very, very good point that came up in the forum is actually, and I just respond to it, that first of all, Michael and Max, please, uh, thank you so much for your contribution. Also, thank you so much for, uh, you know, 
responding here. I really appreciate that. And first of all, Michael said also, make sure that scalable 3D or 2D is in the target hardware. Yes, it is set up like that. Um, and then also here, hard-coded is 4 by MSAA. Uh, even so, if I was running those tests, I couldn't see any significant difference. As you can also see, texture map size is very low, 512 by 512. I think the texture maps here from my kids, uh, they are a little bit higher. Maybe I have here uh, 1K by 1K, something like this, but that shouldn't kill it at all. Um, a big part of your view is filled with the same materials, so maybe look for problems with the materials. Yeah, I did, but... Like I said, the materials are so simple that I cannot see any issues on, on those materials here. And like I said, you downloaded the project file, but as you notice, there's the Substance plugin. Like I said, you can totally ignore it. It shouldn't cause any issues at all. Just basically say, you don't need this freaking plugin. And then second, this is uh, odd. Because you mentioned apparently it's using a custom built Unreal Engine, so it's asking me to rebuild uh, the project. First of all, it could only rebuild or it would rebuild a new project. Um, if you launch it, it wouldn't change anything uh, of your Unreal installer files. But what is so crazy is I'm not using anything else than here the standard Epic Launcher. And I was downloading the latest one. It's called Unreal Engine 4.24.2. So maybe you're on, on a different build. Maybe you're on the build 4.241. Um, I don't know. That can happen. That can be. So maybe you want to make sure that you are running the latest version as well. But usually if that's the case, Unreal creates a total copy of this project. That's all what, what it does. And it doesn't touch the older version, so you always have basically this backup. And uh, yeah, it will be untouched. So you shouldn't have any, any problems at all. So anyways, this project file now is... Um, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm going to upload it. It's already uploaded. I also wanted to show you the blueprints here for the stats. So if you are launching it in the Quest, right, you're deploying it, it's a level blueprint are created and it's basically just a, a, a console a command and I just show the stats with the FPS and of course the stats for the engine so that I can see something when I deploy it on the quest and I'm running it also on my quest of course and you will notice when you move around left and right then the FPS of course is changing Totally, totally makes sense, of course, because you have different draw calls. But it is really crazy in my test that I was rotating this sculpture. So when you press the play button then or when you launch it and deploy it to the quest, you will see that this is a simple rotation. It's an infinitive loop, so to speak. But that rotation itself uh, cost me 20 frames per second, which I feel in this test is kind of like, wow. That is a lot. I mean, uh, one rotation like 20 frames per second as a drop, that's kind of like a re really, really big hit. Uh, what else I wanted to show you? Oh, yeah, and then another test, uh, but that was very successful, and I couldn't see um, any performance issues as well as an audio file. I included with the background music and my audio text to it, explaining this whole thing here a little bit. Um, so that didn't cause any anything uh, I haven't seen any performance issues with or without but what I can clearly see is um, the frame time uh, what you can also see here running it um, is on the quest I think at 14 milliseconds I don't know how bad or good it is um, I don't have any other developers so far uh, who can give me some uh, data from builds they have been creating but that would be very very interesting i just call it out because this is the only thing i can actually see that you know causes it seem seems to be already like causing maybe the issue that you have also this jumping when you move your head from the left to the right um 
whatever it is um it would be great if you would like to download that scene file as well if you don't feel comfortable using that scene file as you can see it can be rebuilt very very quickly and easy because i'm just using primitive geometry and that stuff i was downloading for a test and just brought in is nothing else than sketchfab models and i just wanted to see how it would perform how it would look like or if there's any significant difference in that small level that's about it um yeah thank you so much for any little help i'll keep you posted oh and finally last but not least of course i wanted to call this out all my development process and everything else uh, i'm publishing on my blog so at my fedible.com and if you go to the blog section you can actually see this is now the most recent one the vr development specifically for the oculus quest i was uh, developing some other stuff in previous tests of course for pc versions uh targeting windows 64 um hitting like 90 frames per second and it's a different it's a different beast of course because you have much more uh juice right you have the beef um but deploying for the quest using the android system and using also shader uh, not using shader model 5 instead uh just being limited also to either vulcan vulcan however you want to call it or of course es 3.1 is a big big uh, game changer and of course with all the other limitations as well but like i said i have to say i'm a, i'm such a big fan from the quest i just love the quest and that's why i'm developing for the quest in this series so um yeah like i said uh would be great to ever would like to help me out here and also to debug and and figuring out what settings uh, work actually the best. I'm documenting literally everything here. And also, as you can see, uh, at the beginning, this is not really um, coordinated or you don't see a summary in it. You don't know exactly what I was doing, but um, because I didn't have the time to basically put everything into place how you need it for the development um but um i will do this for sure it's right now really crazy i describe in rough cut steps what you need to do what you need to download how to get started using adb maybe then later on using render doc to basically to debug and and how to get into the code as well and like check out a little bit more stuff but uh, i don't want to get too deep into that for me the most important stuff is honestly like keep it practical keep it in a way that you you have fun developing and creating something you can deploy it to the quest as fast and as efficient as possible but uh, of course i also wanted to mention that and now enough talking um, let me know what you think about it and yeah i'm kind of stuck right now at those two things uh, at the end i wanted to call it out again antilizing issues how can we fix that uh, and how can we keep the performance even better with a higher frame rate uh what else did i forget to say oh maybe uh, when i bake things okay in previous versions i was always using light mass cpus basically the, the built-in light mass cpu baking feature with the swarm but i was then also testing the gpu based light mass uh, which you can find also online somewhere here in the forum i i just put the link then below in the video where you can download that i don't have it here right now uh, and i put it also on my blog of course but the light mass gpu baking was much better it looked much much better i have to say so for shader model 5 i still i'm still like don't know i still was not running those tests if it's actually working then for es 3.1 so that's another question but anyways um that's it for now i hope this is kind of useful as a rough this is a super rough start and i'm sorry that i don't have anything more at this point i'm super busy with so many other things i'm currently working on but <clears throat> this is for sure something i want to push and we will succeed and i hope um, this is helpful for you too as well so thanks for 
watching this. Thanks for helping me out. Happy pixeling, happy developing, happy creating nice VR experiences. And till then, take care. All the best and bye-bye.